So now that I've cleaned this up a little bit and I've got my top slab, I've got my waterfall slab, next thing I need to do is I need to take and fill in this area over here. This is going to be another patch. Now, that next patch that I'm going to make has to accurately represent that scan. So I need to use a reference for the scan. I don't want to give up what I have that's useful. So I'm just going to simply copy and paste. And then once I've done that, I'm going to go back into Digitize Shape Editor. I'm going to go into here. I'm going to say Activate All, select OK. And I'm just going to hide my original. And you'll see why in another video. Now that I've done that, you can see what ends up happening in this shape is this comes in and ramps up to this corner. Now this corner, this is basically the theoretical for this blend. So I'm going to use this to drive this shape. Now again, I'm, I'm slabbing these things in pretty quickly. So, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit further off of the scan than you may necessarily need to be, again, depending on the quality of the scan. But this is pretty close. Everything's within one to two millimeters. And if I really wanted to, I could spend some more time and sweetening things up with my control points. But for the sake of speed, I'm just going to allow this to be what it is. So before I create this, this area, and I want to do it parametrically, and you'll see why. I'm going to go in to my freestyle, I'm going to go to extend, and I'm going to extend the surface. I don't need to extend it that far, I just want to extend it a little bit. Go like that. Now that I have my surface extended, you can see as this comes in, it begins to dive down in this corner, and putting in another patch is going to be really helpful to bring this up to this, to this edge, which is, I'm going to act as my theoretical. To do this, again, I'm going to go into generative shape, and I'm going to do a uh, first thing is a projection. I'm going to project this edge down to my XY plane. That's my ground basically. Then I'm going to parallel this in. I don't care whatever distance, just I'm going to do something for now. And then now that I have that, I'm going to do another projection. I'm going to project this up to that surface using a direction. My direction again is my XY plane or Z in this case, and I'm so simply going to select OK. Now that I have that curve in place, I can verify that that is the position that I need this in. I can come in here, I can double click, and as I move this, you'll notice the one on the slab up here moves as well. So I'm just going to eyeball it, get it kind of close, select OK. Now that I have that, I'm going to go in and generate another surface that blends from this up to this edge. So we'll just go into blend, first curve, first support. Second curve, I want to make sure these arrows are pointing in the correct direction. I don't have a support, I'm not going to be implying any tangency or curvature. So for this, I'm just going to say curvature. I'm going to say none, Let's see what it looks like. And for my tension, I'm going to increase this. I want to get a nice lead in to this next surface and I'm going to simply select OK. Now that I have that surface in place, it's a little tricky to see, as you can see here, but it, it does come up to this theoretical corner. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hide this point cloud. I'm going to split the original surface back to this projection so we can take a good look at that shape. Now that I have that in place, I can come in, I'm going to use my highlight lines analysis, I'm going to pick this split, I'm going to pick that surface, and I'm going to zoom up on it. And you can see I have a nice transition coming across. I'm going to right mouse click on the compass, I'm going to say uh, ZX plane, and you can see here I have a really good transition coming into that little patch. Now. If it doesn't give you what you need, maybe you need to adjust the blend, increase the tension, maybe you need to move this back a little bit more, get that shape, a little bit more lead in into that shape. So you have a lot of options here as far as what you can do parametrically. Now as I do that, I want to look back against my point cloud. Now as you'll see, what's going on is, is this kind of dives down in this corner. 
and that's being driven by this surface. So if I really wanted to get persnickety, I can get in here and I can say, all right, I want to go into freestyle. I want to go into control points. I want to modify the surface. Even though we know it's good within tolerance, maybe it's just not giving me the look that I want. I can come in here. Um, I'm going to leave it along uh, local normals, my symmetry plane. Remember, I'm going across the symmetry plane. I want this to be the same across both sides. And then I'm just going to pull this out a little bit. As I pull this out, it's going to affect. There we go. There we are. It's going to affect this curve. It's going to affect all the shapes that are involved. Now that I have that, I'm going to go in and I'm going to pull along a mesh line this to bring it up a little bit more. And as you can see, as I do that, this eases that flow coming around that corner. It's not quite as tight as it once was. So I'm easing that tension coming in to that edge. So I can, I can manually adjust this a little bit more and go back to the local normals and pull this out a little bit. So as you can see, I now have a very smooth transition coming into that edge and that blend is doing exactly what I want it to do. Now again, I'm a little bit further out down here, so if I really wanted to get closer in this corner, I can go back into control points. I'm going to pick the original surface. I'm going to symmetry plane this and using a local normal, I can just simply pull this up. And as I pull this up, you'll see again these control points begin to morph in, sh in, in shape. That surface. So now what I'm doing is, yeah, I may be deviating from the clay a little bit more, but that deviation may be necessary in order to drive a nice, clean shape. Just like that. Let's see, let me bring this down a little bit more. Select OK. Let me go back into control points. Let me pick this. I'm going to go mesh lines, ZX plane. Pull this up again. And as you can see, I'm getting really close to that shape. I have really nice flow lines into this lead-in surface that kicks up towards the back. I'm filling in that gap that I have in there. Again, remember, this is going to get cut off. I'm going to have another patch that comes in here once I build this next surface or adjacent surface. But this gives me a very easy, very parametric method in which to build these sort of bridge or blend surfaces. All right, let's do that. Local normals once again. Bring this out. I may need to bring these in a little bit. And again, this is where you'd go grab the stylist and say, hey, I need you to come take a look at something. As this is, as this is taking shape, you want to make sure that if you're deviating off of somewhere that it's catching the light the way that they want the light to be caught. go bring this out a little bit more and we will call that little transition over there good so here we have this nice little up kick in the back really smooth transition this would be considered a G3 transition if you needed to maybe you need to increase the tension on a little bit more let me just control Z and control Y so you can see the difference you can see the difference in the peak on that curve. Okay, sometimes it's a little thing like that that the stylist wants, and you have to pay attention to those needs. So that's one quick and easy way to build this, this transition. Now, when I build this next surface across over here, I'm gonna actually have to go back to this original surface, the, the fully untrimmed one, build that surface, and then what I'll do is I'll use this same curve that I have down here, 
to project back up to here and build that transition from this point on down again. And next video I'll cover all that, but this is a good way to build your uh, parametric transition surfaces.